시청자 여러분 안녕하십니까? KBS의 송현정 기자입니다. 저는 지금 청와대 상춘재에 나와 있습니다. 문재인 정부 출범 2년이 됐고 이제 3년째 맞습니다. 정부 State affairs, diplomacy and security, and economic issues. I believe many of us are curious about the, the president's take on these issues. So today we've prepared a special one-on-one -on -one interview with the president to ask him about his thoughts. Here he is. Yeah. 안녕하세요. 아유, 반갑습니다. Good evening, Mr. President. The Sang Chun Jae is most beautiful at this period of time, and this is the most beautiful venue here at Cheongwade, and the best season to uh, visit here, and it's very beautiful out here. I believe we have several issues that we will ask you. Let's go into the venue. Have you been here? Opportunity will be equal and the process will be fair. To realize unification with our own power, we have taken on a very bold journey. The confrontation is mounting, and it's very unfortunate. I don't know if you remember two years ago today, there was this request from the people to make a nation noteworthy of being called a nation, and this was the start of your administration. And uh, we must first begin with your impressions about the past two years. First of all, I would like to uh, extend my gratitude to the people of the Republic of Korea. They have come together with the candlelight uh, revolution and have point appointed myself and picked myself as the president. So the uh, Moon Jae-in administration is uh, standing on top of this candlelight spirit and we will walk towards the path that the spirits uh, guide us, and we will uh, end uh, the era of deep-rooted evil and open up a new era of a just and fair nation. I don't know how much we have living, uh, lived up to the expectations. We have made some uh, achievements, but of course, there are rooms for achievements, and there are areas that we need to make uh, better and uh, supplement. But uh, these areas will be our focus going forward to make a better nation uh, that the people uh, are hoping to see. Today, many of the people will look at this program, and uh, many of them would be your supporters two years ago, and some of them could be uh, could uh, be opposed to you. you and uh, however. 
And there were also there could also be uh, public who did not vote for you, but uh, would like to monitor and look at your path. So we will ask you some uh, various questions. I don't know which I was pondering upon uh, which question we need to uh, begin, but I believe we need to begin with the most imminent issue. Uh, four e hours ago, the North Korea has fired another projectiles. Today, it's uh, estimated to be a short-range missile. I believe you were reported. Yes, I have been. Uh, the North Korea has fired series of projectiles a few days ago, and today, the what they have fired is estimated to be short-range missiles. A few days ago, the firing uh, was probably the guided missiles, but um, today, the what they have fired is estimated to be short-range missiles. The reason is because a few days ago, uh, North Korea fired in front of their sea within the East Sea, so the target range was very short. However, today uh, was fired from the Pyongyang Bukdo area, and it uh, crossed over the territory, and it um, has a target range of over 400 kilometers. So we estimate, and the Korea and the U.S. estimate that um, it's a short-range missile. It has been estimated by the two countries, the U.S. and South Korea. Four days ago, I think, uh, the range was about 240 kilometers, and today what they have fired was 400 kilometers. So one of uh, the projectiles that have fired was 400. And so now you're saying that uh, South Korea and the U.S. have concluded that uh, as of now uh, that uh, this is estimated to be a short-range missile, right? But then the other time, a few days ago, uh, there were people who said that the assessment was very strategic. Uh, South Korea and U.S. was reluctant in using the word missiles. Well, the other time, the altitude was very low and the target range was also very short. So it was too early for us to conclude that it was a missile. So the two countries are continuing uh, our assessment. And today, the firing that they have done today is the altitude is also low, but the target range was uh, much uh, longer. So that's why we have finalized such estimates. And I believe that North Korea could release uh, new uh, new pictures or images, and we need to wait and see. But if this is uh, the mis if this is a missile that they have fired, uh, many are also seeing that this would be a violation of the UN resolution. Well, first of all, the UNSC resolution is targeted on the mid to long range of North Korea. And before that, North Korea has fired short-range missiles, and there was no issues and no problems for that. But within the resolution, the UN resolution, it deals with the ballistic missiles. So even though it's short range, when it's a ballistic missile, it goes against the UN resolution. So uh, that's my take on that. And I believe that we need to have further analysis on that area, right? Uh, yes, uh, the ultimate uh, assessment would be made on uh, after the two countries, the South Korea and the U.S., uh, after uh, going through a very detailed uh, analysis. And just to add a little bit more, the past uh, firing, we are still assessing whether it's a violation of the UNSC resolution, but as of now, the U.S. is saying that it's not a violation of the resolution. So this is uh, the process so far, and this also uh, has been made under the coordination of the two countries, South Korea and the U.S., and also the inter-Korean military agreement. Many say that this was a um, violation of such agreement, but between the two Koreas, we agreed not to use any arms against each other, and also the drills 
We would not carry out drills uh, within certain uh, range within the uh, DMZ area. So, and this time and the other. Uh, the past um, firing was aside uh, was not included in this zone, and uh, the two Koreas are going forward to seeking and continuing uh, areas to assess uh, our joint uh, joint weapons. So I believe that it's not in violation of the Inter-Korean Military Summit as well. But anyhow, when such military activities continue, uh, it can make continued process on, dip, uh, on dialogue much harder. Uh, made provocations twice in five days and the provocation escalated. This is not helpful in the uh, situation, current situation. Why do you think North Korea is making such provocations? I believe this is very imperial, uh, imperative uh, in terms of analyzing their purpose. Uh, it is difficult to know the accurate uh, purpose of their actions, but uh, uh, through comprehensive analysis, I believe uh, we believe that North Korea, uh, after the Hanoi summit uh, in February, uh, they are discontent about the outcome of the Hanoi summit, and therefore uh, they are uh, in uh, in some ways a uh, type of a they are staging type of a demonstration toward South Korea as well as U.S. and also this um, may help. Them, uh, they would think that they may uh, be. This may be a pressuring action uh, for their future talks to be in line with their purposes. Anyhow, uh, whatever the goal of North Korea, such actions are the fundamental resolution uh, to uh, this issue is that the North uh, and the U.S. sit down together uh, on the table for a dialogue, and they speak candidly. Uh, together what they want and have a conversation, have a dialogue uh, would be resolving this issue. If that's not the case, then uh, misinterpretations and misunderstandings will accumulate, which is not helpful. Uh, and this is uh, the message that I would like to give North Korea. On the fourth, the uh, short range projectile that was fired, uh, the US and uh, South Korea Analyze. It, it, it was seen as uh, if uh, the two countries were analyzing this uh, as not as a uh, provocation. Uh, however, there are some views that this is a provocation as well on the, uh, which they did on the 4th of March. Uh, I believe that these actions were planned, but I can also perceive, and it is also seen, that they are not trying to break this uh, atmosphere of talks and negotiations. Because in the past, they were boasting their power. They were trying to display uh, their uh, missile uh, uh, or military uh, power, and it was very threatening, uh, and they used threatening expressions to the international community. However, this time, uh, they, uh, uh, as they said, they are they were testing a new tactical guided weapon, and that was the announcement made by North Korea. And where they fire the weapon uh, was not a, a threatening uh, place to South Korea or the U.S. So I believe that this was expressing their discontent, but at the same time, uh, not being very caref careful not to break the, the talks or the atmosphere. So the uh, projectile was fired on the 4th, but did you uh, foresee such uh, uh, another firing today? 
No, I did not see this coming. And I, as of yet, it is difficult to say if this will be the last one because this happened in, within five days and it is seen as a short-range missile. So there, would be, there could be a possibility that another provocation would come. So uh, not to make this uh, worse or not to make it deteriorating, what is your take on this? Well, whatever the intention of North Korea is, uh, the actions that are taken by North Korea uh, could aggravate the uh, dialogue or the uh, negotiation uh, mood, and we would like to uh, let them know that this uh, is uh, such an action, and the Korean government will uh, exert a multi-pronged effort to uh, share this message with North Korea. Well, the food aid to North Korea is my next question. You uh, talked over the phone with uh, President Trump, and I believe that you were the first uh, one to raise this issue with Mr. Trump. The purpose of the phone call actually was uh, to share our views on how to uh, perceive the March 4th uh, firing of projectile. And uh, Trump's, Mr. Trump's response was that it could, uh, it is, it's not a good situation. However, I would, I don't want to uh, give too much of a meaning because I do like uh, Chairman Kim Jong Un, and we are on good terms. And I expect that the the talks would uh, go on. So that was uh, the message from Mr. Trump. And he also asked me what uh, could be done to uh, expedite the uh, dialogue between the two countries. So, so in this line, the food aid was brought up. So for the negotiations uh, for the talks to go on, uh, you, you see the food aid could be one of the uh, methods, right? Well, before uh, talks or dialogues, uh, UN uh, World Food Program, uh, the World Food Aid Program, uh, they have reported an official report uh, shows that for the last decade or so, uh, North Korea is suffering uh, a very bad uh, food crisis. The report says that uh, an adult uh, is living on two or three eggs per day. Per week. That is right. That that is the situation there, and especially during uh, the springtime, about 40% uh, of the North Korean population uh, is uh, co confronted with famine, especially uh, the minors and uh, women. So that is the essence of the report, and they uh, urged the international community to aid, uh, to give them food aid. So you're saying that the Korean government is taking the lead in supporting the food. So, uh, yes, that is right. Uh, we have in our uh, storage about uh, the food that uh, exceeds uh, the domestic consumption, uh, which uh, is about 60 million won. And with the compatriotism, and um, we are, uh, since we are living uh, side by side, it is a, an issue that we cannot ignore. So it would be a way of opening up and resuming dialogue. And in this area, uh, President Trump has showed open response and supported my intention. So the government has come up with uh, specific measures and size, right? Uh, so you believe that direct, uh, direct method from the government is right, is better? And uh, just to elaborate a little 
little bit more on what Mr. Trump has agreed, because this um, was agreed by the U.S., and many could question uh, this area. So let me just elaborate a little bit more. So first, President Trump has showed open support, and he said that he has an uh, absolute support and blessing for uh, the humanitarian issues in North Korea, and that this is a very uh, great issue that we need to be happy about. And uh, he asked me to, to uh, make this public. And I believe that we understand your uh, intentions. And he said that numerous times, three to four times. And let's ta now talk about the method. And we talked about the uh, Inter-Korean Cooperation uh, Fund which needs to be reported by to the National Assembly of South Korea. And for me, myself, I believe the most desirable method is to, uh, because our uh, national, econo national uh, assembly is stuck with the issue of um, fast track bills. So I believe that this ne issues needs to be dealt uh, on its side and that the food aid issue to North Korea need to be dealt with the um, dealt by the president as well as the two uh, both parties but uh, the timing right now for the public of the South Koreans there are continued um, firing of projectiles by the North Korea and maybe they could have um, they could be opposed to a food aid right now at this specific timing so that is why uh, we were we talked about the food aid issue with uh, between South Korea and the U.S. We talked about this before today's launch, uh, be and because there was the launch on May 4th, I believe we need to have the understanding of the public as well, and also we need to have sufficient discussion between the two part between the uh, ruling and the opposition parties, and so I believe that, uh, that we need to meet the political parties need to meet as well, and with this issue would. Because the National Assembly is at its stalemate, I believe that you want to suggest this issue to the uh, lawmakers, right? Uh, yes, to a certain extent, it's yes. If it's difficult to deal with, um, if the National Assembly is difficult to deal with issues uh, that are very content, like uh, the fast track bills, uh, we could talk about, uh, we could meet to talk about the North Korean issue as well. Now let's look at the big uh, framework. Looking back at the Hanoi summit, uh, the North said Yongbyon is enough, and the U.S. is saying that we need to solve everything. And I believe there was this wide gap, and let's make everything very simple right now. But what is the a way to reduce such gap? Do we have the enough conditions? Well, first of all, the ultimate goal of the denuclearization has been agreed upon by the two parties. The U.S. wants complete denuclearization, and North Korea is seeking a complete security guarantee. And the two parties, as well as South Korea, the three countries have uh, agreed on this ultimate goal. But the problem is, all these goals cannot be exchanged at once. So we need to have progress and process and a roadmap, and there are some discontents uh, in this area. And you have suggested another round of inter-Korean talks, the fourth one, uh, but when can we expect another one? It's really difficult to say that it's not working right now, but as of now, we are not uh, urging the, uh, the North because North Korea is not a country with sophisticated level of diplomacy. After the Hanoi summit, they are reorganizing their own stance and they have met with uh, Putin from Russia. 
So that's why we were we had uh, these schedules uh, in our mind. So until then, North Korea could not be ready to to engage in dialogue to organize another inter-Korean summit. And now, I believe that North Korea is ready to a certain extent, so from now on, we will more proactively suggest another round of inter-Korean summit to bring them back to the dialogue table. And this is a question that I have always wanted to ask you. Uh, you met Chairman Kim Jong-un on the footbridge in the last um, in the last summit, what did you talk with him? Can you explain? I really enjoyed my dialogue with Chairman Kim, and to frankly uh, say, it was kind of a relaxed time uh, to go to uh, my next uh, venue, but actually the two of us sat down and we had candid talks. It was a very good opportunity for candid talks because it was possible because we uh, spoke the same language, so we did not need to have an interpreter. It was very good. And back then, Chairman Kim uh, said and made clear uh, it's his intentions for denuclearization. And he highlighted that it's for the sake of uh, re regime's security, safety security. And uh, they, he said that why would they have to uh, be, be um, holding and be possessing such dangerous a nuclear if their security could be guaranteed. And because that uh, he does not have any experience in dealing with uh, the U.S., he asked me for advice. And mostly uh, it was about Chairman Kim asking myself and I answering his questions. And domestic policy, now let's talk about domestic policy issues. A moment ago, we talked about North Korea policies, food aid to North. And did you officially suggest to the lawmakers to meet to discuss these issues? Now that we have, uh, I have made it public that we need to hold a fourth inter-Korean summit. Uh, we need to have hold uh, working level talks with North Korea. No, I was talking about whether you want to meet with the domestic uh, politicians. Well, right now, the fast track bill is uh, a major issue of confrontation between the ruling and the opposition parties, and this is something that we cannot avoid as of now. But for the public, it's, uh, it's very frustrating to see such confrontation because we have many bills uh, that are pending that are related to the livelihoods of the people, and we need to also deal with the uh, additional budget issue. Uh, at this moment of time, what we need is the uh, the special uh, organization con consultation body be between the government, ruling, and the opposition parties. So I believe this would be a great opportunity to discuss such issues. It has worked on November, so once in November you have met, but it's now not uh, being sustained. Not talking about the responsibility, but let's turn to your role as the uh, chief of uh, the national uh, the state affairs. Taking such time is, in turn, it's equals to the burden on state affairs. So many seniors also asked you that the, go the president should t take the initiative to solve such confrontation. I cannot agree more. But looking back two years ago, May 10th, which is tomorrow, I had an inauguration uh, ceremony in simple terms, and I invited all of the major um, figures from the ruling and the opposition parties. And compared to previous administrations, I met most frequently with the representatives of the opposition party. And of course, 
It's, uh, it's kind of difficult to meet uh, on a regular basis because our parties are different. But I wanted to make a uh, regular consultative body. It was hap it happened in uh, March, but this pledge has not been kept. So now, even it's late, I want to keep this pledge and to show to the people. Uh, but anyhow, we are exerting our efforts. But we need we need two hands to clap. So therefore, I hope that the opposition party could also accept my uh, suggestion. As for the opposition party, for them, their perspective, many issues. Let's talk about the first, uh, the largest, uh, the main opposition party, the Liberty Korea Party. Uh, in their perspective. The Changwade and the ruling is just carrying on with state affairs without referring to the opposition party's uh, intentions, and that's why they're they're naming you as a dictator. What did you feel? First of all, the fast track itself, in its nature. It's about the majority. Uh, having the check and balance to impede uh, a unilateral processing and as a resolution to prevent these uh, malfunctioning that is a uh, fast track and being called a dictator because of this uh, fast tracking uh, I don't think this is reasonable and National Assembly Advancement Act uh, should also be uh, abided by. And the, the administration that was born uh, through the candlelight revolution being named as a dictatorship, and, uh, which is also aggravated by uh, being called a leftist dictatorship. Uh, being called that, I cannot find words to describe uh, how I feel. Well, that may be what you are being called, but you still think that you should meet them, right? First of all, they have used this uh, extreme expressions. However, uh, if these are in terms of political um, rhetoric, this has been happening for a long time. So we need to turn the page to the next one and to find the new resolution and go forward. Well, we are talking about uh, cooperative governance. So uh, this is the question uh, that is very natural. When you were meeting with the veterans, uh, you talked about uh, first uh, rooting out the deep-rooted evils and then the cooperative governance should come. This was what was reported. Was this the right reporting or was this the right uh, statement that you made. First of all, uh, that is not what I have said. And the meeting that I had with them, the dialogue we had together, my spokesperson uh, made a good report about it. I have not seen the KBS report, however. Uh, the other uh, reports uh, was literally about what I have said during that meeting. However, the, the headlines or the subtitles uh, that were focused on a, a, a disproportionate focus on what I've said, uh, maybe that is a misleading uh, subtitle which uh, led to a criticism that I found uh, quite perplexing. What I am uh, referring to is not only the veterans, but uh, the people of Korea uh, I believe that uh, people are requesting for a uh, joint governance and, uh, and cooperation, uh, not, much, not, not too much uh, emphasis on the uh, eradicating of deep-rooted evils. 
and I believe this is not something that the government can control. And my own opinion is about uh, this um, uh, influence meddling and, uh, and the uh, deep-rooted evils that we uh, have, ref have been referring to. This, uh, if this is true, if this uh, is uh, confirmed as uh, truth, then this is going against the Constitution and therefore this could not be uh, passed by. So that is why I am trying, I am uh, waiting until uh, the uh, conclusion uh, comes out. And so my opinion is that this is something that I cannot compromise, and then the uh, cooperative uh, governance would come. Well, uh, when we talk about the fast track, we uh, have uh, issues about the uh, special unit to investigate high-ranking government officials, and also the um, police prosecution investigative rights reform. The prosecutor general had denounced such uh, fast track bills. Uh, is this uh, recalcitrant or uh, how do you see uh, the prosecutor general's response to this? Because last year there was an agreement between the two ministers. Well, fast track does not mean that the bill was passed. It is to uh, tabling to table the motion, and afterwards, uh, after deliberation, it, it will go to the General Assembly of the National a General uh, Session of the National Assembly. So it has uh, more processes to go through. And the prosecution uh, is an expert body of uh, legal affairs, so I believe that uh, it is possible that uh, they express uh, their own opinion, and that is my take on it. However, uh, what I would like to say to the prosecution is that uh, this uh, redistribution of investigative rights and police uh, prosecution investigative rights reform. Uh, these uh, agenda is coming up as a method of reform because prosecution, the prosecution uh, did not fulfill their own duties and missions. So the prosecution uh, is the, the uh, own party of this reform, and it is a universal um, opinion of the people that they cannot self-reform. So I believe that uh, they should be more uh, uh, humble in terms of dealing with this issue. Uh, the police prosecution investigative rights reform, this leads to uh, um, the a senior presidential secretary of civil affairs, Cho Gu. And in this process, uh, of course, a ministry could raise issues. I believe this will be carried out under set uh, procedures. And let's talk about Cho Gu, who is a senior presidential secretary, secretary for civil affairs. Is his role uh, organized to a certain extent? Well, let's talk. Is, are you trying to ask me that if Cho Gu uh, would like to be engaged in politics? Well, for me, as on my part, I have no intention to suggest him to become a politician. This is an issue that he needs to decide on his part. And the senior uh, presidential secretary for civil affairs, the most crucial role for uh, this role is not only the personnel issues, but also uh, the overall, um, overall monitoring of our uh, administration. So all, I believe that we have carried out all of the reforms that the government uh, could take, and now we need to reform the legal bodies. And I hope that he could finish this process. So this reform continue to the legal bodies. Can you be a little bit more specific? Then that means you need to stay, uh, he needs to stay at Chongade a little bit longer, right? Uh, of course, this has been raised as a fast track bill, but we 
we need to also be dealing with this at the Standing Committee of the National Assembly. And we also uh, need to talk about the methods, the procedures, because it's not set yet. And we talked about the ministers of uh, justice and the interior uh, ministry. They have made an agreement about the adjustment uh, of the investigative powers between the police and the prosecution. But there are some adjustments that have made, and above all, uh, the investigative uh, rights of the government of the uh, prosecution was something that the prosecution could raise uh, concerns about. That's my candid uh, opinion. And for public, I believe it's more easier that way. But and the prosecution could find uh, that it's very logical. Uh, but uh, I believe that it's needed to increase and to heighten and to stress uh, the trials. Uh, the trial-centered uh, investigation. I believe that we need to also listen to the court uh, and we need to involve uh, diverse parties. We talked about Cho Gu, Senior Presidential Secretary for Civil Affairs, and the issue of personal verification. Uh, we need to touch upon this issue. Up until now, the personal verification by the uh, Chongwade, are you satisfied with this because the public is evaluating your process uh, progress on this with a very low score. Uh, people say uh, that it's a personal failure or a uh, personal um, disaster, but uh, I do not agree with that, uh, including Prime Minister Lee nak and other ministers. They are doing great. And up until now, the Moon Jae-in administration has made certain progress, and it's not uh, done just by myself. My cabinet has done the job, and the uh, ministers who had been appointed, if they couldn't do their role, I believe that that is the personal failure, but they are doing their role and they are doing great, so I believe it's not a failure. Uh, there are some uh, ministers who are who are assessed very uh, highly, even though they, their uh, hearing did not pass. And l now people are talking about the verification process that uh, it did not meet to the standards of the public. And I take that humbly, but I want to stress that we need to, uh, to stress uh, and to intensify the verification process. So, for instance, the Imi uh, Sun, uh, the Chief Justice of uh, the Constitutional Court, and also the Minister of the Transport. Uh, and uh, they had their own faults, and, um, and people were questioning what is uh, the standard and what is uh, what has been wrong. Was it? Uh, they raised questions about some appointments. Uh, I believe that uh, they. I hope that they could uh, look at it in this point from the start of the appointment of the Chongwade and up until their. Uh, uh, appointment. It's a process. Uh, these people, a small selection of people, um, cannot be cannot be uh, perfect to a certain extent. Uh, the verification needs to be done by the hearing process as well as the media. <laughs> and the president needs to make the final decision. And the Chongwade's verification, if there are some areas that we did not uh, find out in our own verification, uh, we cannot say that it's a failure. But we, it is true that we need to elevate the qu uh, quality of our verification, and we will exert our efforts to achieve this end. And one thing I could add is that we, even though we have faults in certain aspects, 
What we are trying to appoint these people because in to a certain extent we have uh, highly praised their uh, capabilities and abilities. So the faults and the capabilities, I hope that uh, people could look at uh, these two aspects of uh, these figures. And uh, people are just um, widely criticizing the personal appointment of the government. So uh, many people who are capable, uh, even though they are capable, and even though they do not have many faults, they are reluctant to stand in front of the national hearing. Uh, so uh, they are trying to, uh, to not be appointed. And if the hearing sessions become uh, continue its uh, features like this, it will hinder great uh, personal appointment. So that's my take on that. And you, I think that it's point of time to think about how to change these process. And I believe that this system, the hearing system, uh, has been carried out for the past decade or so. So we have been uh, experiencing such a system. Uh, but if you think that think of such system, the, the data that Changwade has about these people, uh, I believe that you need, why don't you uh, re to, uh, report this to the National Assembly? And you could hide the personal information and you could reveal and make public uh, the detailed data. Maybe did you have any uh, thoughts on reorganizing the uh, process and the system? I believe that this could be an area, uh, this could be a method to persuade the public. But uh, many, peop many people say that Chongwade has uh, has questioned what is the problem and why you would like to appoint certain figures despite such faults. So I believe your explanations were lacking, and therefore people raised questions about the capabilities of these um, of these people. So what is your take on this? First of all, the first area, the system that you talked about is being suggested by myself. So we are trying to follow the US model and to make the hearing session into a two-staged. First, it's an ethical verification and a moral ethic uh, verification which is uh, happening closed door. However, uh, all the data must be shared among the government uh, and the political parties and the National Assembly to assess whether they are qualified for uh, to become a public officer. And second, the second stage is about uh, capabilities, which will be made open public. And I believe that this two-stage system is uh, desirable, and I am suggesting this. And I would, if this happens, I will submit all of the data, and also the opposition party will su submit their data as well. If the Chongwade reports and uh, discloses the personnel, uh, but we would like to appoint him or her due to such capabilities, and in this stage, we would like to make clear. Of course, we do not need to uh, follow the same system for every one of the personnel that we appoint, uh, but in the past, when I myself was the senior presidential secretary for civil affairs, this was my uh, procedure back then. What I am uh, stressing is that because we did this in the past, in the early stages, uh, we look at the person's faults and uh, capabilities all at once in balance. So this person would be given a chance to talk about his or her faults at the hearing session. So uh, we would not like to make a controversy out of this. And it looks as if the Chongwade is trying to hide and conceal all of these faults after all these uh, all these um, issues have been made. So I believe that this will be uh, my, uh, my take going forward. 
Let us uh, hear what the people are trying to say to the president. Well, the inter-Korean uh, issues, I, well, after uh, Moon Jae -in, President Moon Jae-in took office, uh, I uh, feel a little bit comfortable about North Korea. Well, I think the communication process is going well uh, compared to other administrations. I hope the economy would revive and we can have a lot of uh, jobs, more jobs, especially the SMEs. It is very difficult to meet up to the uh, minimum wage, and uh, that is why the uh, self-employed are working only by themselves. Well, I am working as a part-time, and uh, I, uh, am, my working hours have been reduced because of the m minimum wage. Well, uh, people, the politicians are not looking at the livelihoods of the people. Uh, we, I think we should uh, look, look more into diplomacy and uh, North Korea. However, uh, the people of Korea comes first. Uh, this uh, air quality is so bad that it's difficult to see the sky. I hope the policy is centered on uh, closing the uh, income gap. I think the administration is going for, toward a, the right track, uh, whether it's economy or the inter-Korean relations. Uh, the uh, sex, uh, sexual assaults, uh, the employment issue, I hope uh, these could be resolved. The welfare policy, uh, I think this is going overboard, uh, and this might have, uh, we might see some consequences on this, so this is my uh, concern. Uh, I am saving up a lot, and uh, but still it's very difficult to uh, get married and uh, have a, a house in Seoul. So this housing uh, price issue, I hope this could be resolved so that people like us can uh, have dreams to have our homes. Uh, as working moms, it's so difficult to have a uh, balance between work and uh, bear, rearing children. So, what, uh, what do you think? I wish I could really respond to all of these people. Uh, I want to resolve their issues, and I feel sorry that I can't do that. There are a lot of uh, points about the economy, so let's go into the economic issues. The minimum wage uh, raise the economic policies that you have been executing. If people are asked to uh, name some of the uh, sticking points, it would be uh, the income-led uh, growth. Minimum wage hike would not be all about the income-led growth. However, because of the uh, because of this issue is overshadowing the income-led growth, this uh, I believe that we should fine-tune a little bit. Do you have any regrets on this point? Yes, I do feel some regrets. First of all, I would like to make one point very clear. The minimum wage hike, through this, at least the, um, the people who are in the employment market, who are in the job market, already employed, their salary has uh, seen uh, some good days, actually. The low-income labor uh, portion has uh, seen all-time low, and the uh, high percentile laborers and the uh, low percentile laborers, the gap has been uh, narrowed, uh, and the income gap has been closed. And 500,000 people were um, employed more. So the people in the labor market, the effect of the minimum wage hike is apparent. However, the people who are out of this circle, uh, uh, in especially the self-employed people or the people in the, uh, the laborers in the lowest bracket, uh, their livelihoods uh, deteriorated. And my regrets, and I uh, feel 
이런 분들 sorry that uh, we could not uh, take their issues also and resolve it together and the uh, social uh, broadening the social network uh, and these policies if all these could have been conducted uh, in parallel then we could have solved some of the these issues EITC, yeah. EITC and self-employed, uh, supporting the self-employed, uh, these policies have to go through the National Assembly. Um, so that is why there's a time gap. And that is also the, uh, uh, the point that I, uh, the, I feel sorry as uh, the government that I am leading. Uh, well, so you know the side effects. And therefore, the minimum wage hike uh, to control the, the speed of raising the hike, I believe that you agree on uh, the need. So we will see next year's uh, wage hike, and we have seen double-digit growth for the last two years. Do you think this will happen also next year? I know this uh, is a very sensitive issue. I know that you do not have the right to uh, conclude this point. Well, you, you are right. However, uh, during the uh, presidential campaign, uh, I made a pledge that uh, we will see double-digit growth in uh, the uh, wage uh, hike. And therefore, I believe I do share uh, the responsibility to uh, abide by my words. I do not, I do not have the authority to uh, approve this issue. So it's very difficult for me to propose a guideline on this, but the pledge that I made uh, was until 2020, but it doesn't mean that it uh, should be, that it, we should have uh, the same speed of increasing the minimum wage by 2020. It should, uh, we should find a uh, fine line, and uh, I believe that this year's minimum wage hike uh, was uh, adjusted somewhat to the reality compared to last year. But such a control of uh, the speed, uh, there would be the uh, there would be good effects however there are some adverse effects so the committee for minimum wage hike uh, i believe that they have the authority to depend and conclude on uh, the amount of uh, increase so as a legal institution uh, we are uh, talking about the two-phased uh, minimum wage hike, and this is the bill that uh, we have proposed to the National Assembly. However, it was not approved. But I believe this committee for minimum wage uh, would take this into consideration. Well, we have touched upon it briefly, and, but because of the minimum wage increase, the income-led growth uh, was tarnished in some ways. So uh, what is your take on this? As I said, uh, the quality of employment did go up. However, the quantity of the employment uh, has deteriorated. And among the reasons, uh, there are a lot of structural issues. However, the uh, income-led growth uh, did take uh, 
did contribute in terms of this uh, point. So there are uh, different views on this. However, I do believe that we need some more time to see how it unfolds. For the last year, the employment um, has gone uh, down significantly under 100,000 people. But it is going up uh, to the level of 250,000. And I believe uh, the government is uh, projecting this trend to uh, persist. And the uh, increase uh, of employment, uh, we projected it to be 150,000. However, we believe that it will be an actual 200,000. Especially if we uh, have the supplementary budget approved, this would uh, expedite. So the minimum wage rate, the uh, adverse effects of it, uh, I think we should look at it in a long-term view. Uh, however, I do know that there are people uh, who are facing with imminent uh, problems. So this is the focus that we should also uh, consider. Now you have talked about the exact number of jobs. Do you still have the uh, so-called job dashboard at your office? Yes, of course, I still have it in my office. Did you take a look at it today? Um, I look at it on a monthly basis. Uh, the report is done every uh, month, so we have the results every month. Uh, the conditions for employment have been released up until March, so we are seeing uh, the updates for March, and the exports have, we have the data for April. Uh, it's been better because uh, in, uh, we have had better conditions lately, but the good indexes have uh, gone up and the bad indexes have gone down. So during the past two months or so, you said that the number of jobs have been got better, uh, but the quality of jobs and the quality of employment is an issue. We looked at the uh, number of jobs. There were more jobs created, but the time, it was less than 15 hours per week. So it's at the gray area of the insurance coverage. It was an ultra-short-term employment, and most of the newly created jobs fall under this category. Uh, that is correct. This is correct. It's an ultra-short-term employment. It's mostly targeted for the elderly. As you know, the aging society is very rapidly uh, unfolding here in Korea, and the uh, population of these people who are aged 64, uh, 65 is increasing uh, and to expect it to increase over 20 percent uh, very soon. And for them, the elderly, uh, a good quality regular job is very difficult. Be uh, and ultra short term employment is uh, very necessary for these people because they would be under the in the gray area of welfare. So for them, these jobs for the elderly people, even though the quality is bad, uh, it's better than having no jobs at all. So I believe this is uh, good at to a certain point. As you have explained, it could be true that having a job is better at uh, than having a no job. But you need to think about the burden of the budgets, right? Uh, the public, uh, public labor, public work of the um, elderly people have been carried out for the past administrations as well. So it's a matter of uh, welfare through jobs. Because the ratio of the uh, aging society is increasing, and because the ratio was very low in the past, we doubled it. And 
We made it so that it will help resolve the poverty issue of the elderly population. And that is why, uh, just to add a little bit more, the elderly population rate has also improved a lot. So we have been focused about the elderly uh, jobs, the jobs for the elderly. However, the most urgent issue is youth employment. And having sustained jobs for the youth is important. Where should we create these jobs? You have talked about uh, creating more public jobs, well, 810,000 new jobs in the public sector. Uh, the youth employment rate has gone up significantly, and the their unemployment rate has decreased significantly as well. And in particular, through the, from the ages 25 to 29, uh, their population have increased, but their employment conditions have improved. Of course, uh, not all the problems have been resolved, but to increase uh, quality jobs, we cannot solve everything at one uh, strike, but because we are strong in manufacturing, uh, as well as shipbuilding and automobile uh, sector. They, they have been sluggish due to the global trend, but we can uh, make them more sophisticated and to create more jobs. And one area is to create uh, and to grow our new industries to expedite the speed of cr job creation and to increase uh, our venture uh, capital, venture companies as well. And meanwhile, we can also uh, increase uh, the public jobs in the public sector. Uh, we talked about the jobs for the elderly, but we could also increase the number of firefighters or policemen and uh, that we still lack a number of social services jobs. So we can create more jobs in this aspect. Okay, now let's wrap up the issue of job uh, jobs, but let's talk about the job growth, uh, the employ, uh, economy growth of the country. Uh, the growth rate was minus 0.3% last year. It's a very worrisome figure. And compared to the previous quality, uh, it was negative 0.3%. And compared to the previous year, it's a 1.8% growth year on year. Our objective is over, at least over 2.5 or 2.6% uh, projection-wise. But uh, we need, uh, we have room for imp uh, to, for improvement. But by March. The sluggish export and sluggish in, uh, the, uh, investment was improving. So the government and the Bank of Korea, from the second quarter on, uh, we assessed that the co uh, conditions will be better and that the latter half of the uh, year would uh, see better growth rate and to see a better uh, growth rate that will be closer to our projection rate. But other institutions, mainly the international institutions, are decreasing their uh, level of economic projection and out economic outlook. And what I want to say, throughout the past two years, if I was to pick a very um, memorable moment, you had a moment of uh, giving comfort to the people who, the victims of the uh, May 18th demonstrations, and I believe people were moved because uh, you ha had a sympathy, but I don't know whether this is related to the uh, economy. You believe that the economy will be better, but in our daily lives, especially for the people uh, who are experiencing hardships on a daily basis, these are not felt in by their skin. We have we are going under challenges, but why is the president saying that everything will be better off? So people are raising such question. I believe I understand that the people could raise such question, but what we need to make clear is that in a, a macroeconomic view, our economy had made great success. I met with uh, the seniors in the past, and 
we have talked about uh, the issues that we were unfolding. Uh, we have seen great achievements uh, in the past seven decades. And last year, uh, our income uh, went over three uh, 3,000 US dollars, and we joined the club of 3050. And these countries, as well as G20 countries and OECD countries, South Korea has made high level of growth. Among the 3050 uh, club, uh, we rank second uh, after the U.S., and the trend of growth is still continuing. So macroeconomic view, we need to have pride in ourselves. However, this is not being distributed evenly to every one of the uh, public, the people. So there, that's why we have a very severe problem of bipolarization, and the income of the uh, low-level uh, bracket is still suffering, and also the job uh, market is uh, being being sluggish, and the administration also shares the same view, and we also feel the same as for that. Jobs and the investment, and to vitalize to our, our economy, one as one pillar is the government, but the other pillar is the corporations. You visit these corporations and businesses. Um, I've seen through the media. You went to Samsung Electronics and met with uh, Vice Chairman Lee Jae-yong. I believe that you can expect my next question right before the final verdict of the Supreme Court. You have met with Lee Jae-yong, but wasn't this a kind of a burden on your side? Uh, the Samsung Electronics is, has said uh, that they will invest 130, uh, 133 trillion won uh, to the uh, non-memory semiconductor. And even though uh, they be conglomerates or venture companies, I am willing to visit them and I am willing to meet with them, whoever it may be. And in this aspect, I expected uh, that there will be two criticisms against myself, one being, am I going back to the trajectory of reviving the conglomerates? And second, um, am I favoring him ahead of the verdict of the Supreme Court? However, I believe we need to uh, move beyond such dichotomy um, outlook. And if I meet with uh, the conglomerates, I would be not pro-conglomerate. If I meet with laborers, would I really be pro-laborers only? And before I met with him in the morning of the same day, in the cabinet, we dealt with the issue of the conglomerates, and we agreed to a halt a bribery and embezzlement of the high-ranking officials, high-ranking uh, executives of the conglomerates. So uh, we dealt these issues in that same morning with my cabinet members, and I believe that these are just uh, criticisms um, in nature. And the second was uh, whether I would be favoring uh, him ahead of the verdict. And such criticism, I think, looks actually looks down upon the role of our uh, court. So the economy, court, management are all separate things. We have seen uh, worse cases in the past of, of, of the judiciary um, institution being tarnished. So that is maybe why all these criticisms came about. Well, that is true, but if that is is uh, the case uh, today, then it, the people around me should be favored. However, that is not the case of the people. Uh, we are seeing the reality that they are going through a more strict scrutiny. Well, I have talked about the past policies until now. Let me uh, ask you about the policies going forward. Uh, what should be, what are the uh, 
focus of your policies going forward, uh, being prepared, being prepared for uh, a for, uh, fourth industrial revolution, the uh, future growth engines, and so on. Well, as I mentioned before, the growth rate of the Korean economy is not at all low. But what is worrying is the potential growth rate is coming down and it is coming down uh, continuously, but the memory uh, semiconductors uh, or the new growth engines are not in the pipeline, and that is the worrying part. So that is why it is imminent that we come up with uh, what are the future growth engines, and that is what I refer to as innovative growth. So the pressing issue that we should uh, channel all our efforts is the system semiconductor biohealth and future cars. So these parts will be uh, where we are going to put our fullest efforts in. And all the other industries uh, we are also going to pay attention to, and we are going to revive our uh, prowess of manufacturing powerhouse. And already last year, the newly founded businesses, uh, venture businesses, and the new venture investment saw its largest ever increase last year. So the venture boom, so to say, uh, should be carried on and it should continue. And at the same time, we are going to strive uh, for, uh, to make uh, better jobs. Well, you talked about system um, semiconductors, uh, hydrogen cars, and biohealth, but all these sectors, uh, they should be led by a big uh, conglomerates. Is that right? Not necessarily, because system semiconductor uh, part, uh, the foundry semiconductor uh, was about uh, producing uh, a mass production of a system semiconductor. However, the uh, feminist semiconductor part, uh, these are uh, fit to the SMEs more than the conglomerates. And also the biohealth sector, the SMEs are, are doing very well, uh, especially the uh, companies that are listed on COSTAC. Their exports are uh, soaring, so these are a befit uh, the nature of SMEs. The future cars as well, we only think about the conglomerates, however, but the uh, lightweight cars, uh, uh, the electronic cars, uh, vehicles, uh, the SMEs are really uh, doing well in this part. Well, uh, let me give, ask you a brief question about labor issue, the 52-hour week and the bus uh, union labor. They are uh, going through a vote uh, for a strike. And also the, this 52-hour uh, work week, if this is not managed uh, properly, this could result in uh, a unnecessary, uh, unnecessary dispute or discussion. So I think we should have some uh, preparations in this regard. Well, the 52-hour uh, work week, uh, this is executed only uh, for the corporations with more than 300 employees. And until as of last year, end of last year, uh, the 95 percent of the companies with 300 and more people are in uh, this uh, policy, they are abiding by this policy. So next year onwards, it will be expanded to uh, 50 persons and more companies uh, to abide by the 52-hour work, work weeks. Of course, there will be some difficulties at first, but this will uh, settle in just as uh, we settle into the uh, five working day week in the past. Most of the municipalities are already 
implementing the 52-hour work week, uh, especially for the bus uh, unions. Um, but only it was Gyeonggi-do province that uh, were not falling under this category. Uh, so they would need to hire more bus drivers. And for that, the fare should go up as well. So that is why uh, there are the, these uh, problems that we're seeing uh, arising. Well, the time is running out, so let me ask you some questions. Uh, the conservative party, they are asking for pardoning of uh, former President Park Geun-hye. Uh, since you're a lawyer, I do believe that you have your own opinion, uh, legitimate opinion. So, of course, it is before the final verdict. However, uh, I would like to ask you on your opinion as the president. First of all, former President Park Geun-hye and Lee Myung-bak, uh, the situation that they are in, one is on bail, and another uh, one is in imprisonment. I uh, feel great sorrow. They are predecessors, so I think uh, I would be feeling the sorrow uh, more than anyone. However, as you just said, uh, we do not have the final verdict. So against this backdrop, uh, it is too early to talk about uh, pardoning. So after the Supreme Court, uh, a court's verdict, uh, we will see how it goes. Before that, it's difficult to discuss about this uh, point. Uh, one thing I left out was about the Korea-Japan relations, the uh, issues in the past. It's something that we cannot eliminate. It. It's, it's a fact. And it is um, stalling the bilateral ties. And I think we're in a gridlock. But there is a little bit of a breakthrough that we have a new emperor in Japan. And maybe this could be the reason, but in Japan, I understand that there are some uh, issues arising. Uh, people are saying that the emperor might uh, visit, pay a visit to Korea. Well, the new emperor uh, coming to the throne, uh, and maybe this could uh, uh, ease the tension between the two countries, uh, so I, I hope that it happens. Uh, the two, the relations between the two countries is very important to us. However, as you said, the uh, historical issues, uh, they are holding on to us. Uh, to progress. This is not an issue that is created by the Korean government. It is an issue, arises, that, issue that arises from the historical issues, what we have done, what they have done in the past. And I think the recognition and acknowledgement of the history has been, has been uh, advancing, and maybe that is why uh, we are facing this issue. However, we, I believe the two governments should uh, muster our strength and gather our uh, heads together to find wisdom to go forward. So, I think it is uh, Tokyo that is um, putting this issue to their internal politics, and that is why this is really holding us behind. Have you prepared uh, the Japan, uh, the Korea-Japan summit, marking the G20 summit? Uh, 
I will be meeting uh, with G20 uh, summits, but I believe it would be good if I could sit down with uh, Prime Minister Abe. We have the general election coming up next year. The Prime Minister, as well as many ministers, uh, there are uh, on a long run. But the if with the general election coming up, there could be some uh, calls from the ministers internal ministries internally. Have you thought about reshuffling of your cabinet? It. I did not think up a specific timing of the reshuffling, but uh, the prime ministers as well as ministers, if they are willing to uh, to uh, go for uh, the general elections, I will uh, I will support their uh, decisions. Uh, if they are willing to do so, I believe, I hope that they could uh, tell me in advance. Uh, I believe this is more desirable. This uh, will make everything more fair, and I believe it will increase the fairness of the government as well. And also the voters are uh, are wanting uh, to see more fair and more balanced uh, appointment from all of the regions. So I believe this is also a call from our uh, voters. We have passed 80 minutes that we have prepared for you. I don't know if you uh, elaborated enough uh, through this time. But my final question, a few days ago, in the foreign media, ordinary people have lost, um, lost pride. You have said in uh, foreign media, what would be the next three years for uh, such ordinary people? This is my final question to you. First and foremost, uh, hero and movies. Hero movies are uh, very popular these days. And in our histories as well, heroes, uh, it's seen that heroes have transformed the history. But what I would like to say is this is not true. Uh, the March 1st independence movement, uh, the leaders were not in the, uh, in the front, but or just ordinary people were leading such initiative. And the April 19th revolution and also the May, 19, uh, May 18th Gwangju and the June uh, demonstrations and also the uh, candlelight revolution as well were led by the ordinary citizens uh, who, who came with benevolence and goodwill. So the ordinary uh, people with goodwill have resulted in a regime change and I believe that going forward until my day that I end my uh, administration, we will exert our full efforts to this end. And more um, specifically, up until now, our economy was a strong economy, but uh, we would like to make it more fair, and we would like to hinder uh, any uh, sustainment of um, of corruption and privileges, and we would reduce uh, the gaps as well as the bipolarization so that everyone will be better off. And also the inter-Korean relations would move beyond uh, move beyond confrontation to reach a peace uh, era an era of peace, and this is my objective. Of course, my administration cannot achieve everything at once, but I would like to make clear that the day at the day uh, I end my uh, presidency, I believe, I hope that the people could feel this uh, by their skin. Well, you have, uh, this time was prepared to, for you to step, take a step closer to our public and for the public to understand your intentions. Thank you very much. Yeah.